What's happening, Chip Beat Squad? Welcome your beautiful faces back to the channel. In today's video, we're bringing back the coaching series. This is going to be the first episode of the coaching series since season seven, split two of ranked, if I'm not mistaken. And about a week ago, I sent a post on Twitter and YouTube on the community page to send in your gameplays, send those ranked games over, and make sure it's on Olympus because a lot of you guys sent gameplay, but it was on King's Canyon, so I won't be using those. And if you guys are new to the coaching series, this is essentially reviewing subscribers' gameplays. I used to do it in public matches, but I am going to be doing mostly ranked because there's a lot more I can talk about when it comes to rotations, picking smart fights, and that's going to benefit if you were playing a public match in general. So we left our beautiful watermark. Shout out to Aaron Daniel for sending in his gameplay on Twitter. All right, let's take a look at their legend combination here. So it looks like we got Wraith, Bloodhound, and Octane. This is going to be a decent setup. Not much for the Wraith part, but the Bloodhound and the Octane is going to come huge. The jump pads on this map are crucial. They get you from point A to point B with taking minimal damage, which is really good. It's much better than a zipline. So Pathfinder is sort of out of the question, but you could still use them. The Hound is crazy with the scans. You're going to get your max KP, so that's good for the team. And then Wraith, obviously, you can swap her out for uh, multiple legends. Gibby would probably be the better choice in this occasion here. And they're going to land at this little town here. I actually like going at this spot. You can get a nice fight at the Rift. Let's see. I think they're contested here. Let's focus up. Let me move this thing over. Whoop. Right there. And that's a squad wipe. The game went a little bit blurry. Am I still on 1080? Yes, I am. So let's run that back real quick because I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about. So first things first, we are looking at some Platinum 3 gameplay. So I'm not sure if he's solo queuing. He probably isn't because they're all PS4 players and he didn't put it in the title. Most people that do solo queue, when I ask for the gameplay, they put it in the title. That it's a solo game. So a really good drop here. He lands contested, but he also lands with a teammate and his third teammate lands at the adjacent building, which is really good. You don't want the enemy team to take advantage of all the loot spots. You want to dominate the loot area. Now, that doesn't mean one person land here, one person land here, one person land here. Split yourself away from three different buildings because then you can get soloed out really quickly. If the enemy team lands together, they get a gun and they notice that one of you guys are split. They're going to instantly ape you. Maybe not on these lobbies, but when you get to that diamond tier, when you get to the master and the pred lobbies, they know what they're doing. So they're going to take advantage of that right away. However, you can sometimes get away with landing split. You just got to make sure of your positioning and making sure to get the call outs on point. Where are you going to group up as a team, post up and hold that area waiting for that push? So you land here and you get a beautiful setup right off the rip. I mean, this is got tier setup. You get a 301 and they triple take. And the way I like to use the triple take is quick scoping with it. Hit fires is OK, but you're not going to get that charge. You know, the built in precision choke now that we have that on the triple take, it's not going to charge up. So when you do hit fire max, you're going to get like 50 damage off the shot. So quick scoping, you have the potential to charge it up to that second tier when you shoot. If you want to wait for the third tier to get the most damage out of it, go for it. You start hit firing at a... The first shot was good. Second shot was good. But then you started hit firing right here. Do not worry. Listen, that lifeline has to open the door. Okay, these doors are closed. She's going to have to open the door. And she messed up by jumping. So now she has to wait till she drops down. Then open the door. So those two hit fires that you missed would have connected with a nice quick scope if you took your time with it or even a potential hard scope here. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. I also backed the clip up just a little bit just to show you that the R301 wasn't completely empty and when you went into that door which i will follow up in a second right here so you shot the other one look how many bolts you have left 10 bullets which is about half of a magazine when you don't have a mag on it so you swap back to the triple take get some nice shots here again we talked about take your time with it don't rush it she has to open the door and she also messed up by jumping in the air still only giving more time she gets away from you here right here instead of reloading get a quick weapon swap going 
which would have beamed her. Those 10 bullets would have finished her off right here. You decide to reload. Nice hit fire. I was going to say, you're still hit firing it, but that range is acceptable for a hit fire. So very good job on that. The other thing I want to talk about is that you have your damage numbers on floating, I believe. If you want to use something when it comes to damage numbers, make sure you're using stacking. Floating is going to give you all every single bullet that you hit in a number on its own, and it won't add it together. So realistically, you're not going to know how much total damage you did, but you're going to know if you cracked them or if they're flesh. And at that point, why do you even have the damage numbers on? So you want to make sure you stick to stacking on the damage numbers. And that's really crucial when it comes to those higher end lobbies, diamond and above. You know, I beamed this guy for 130. Then your teammates know if you say 130, they have 70 HP left. I think a big mistake when it comes to callouts is everyone saying, you know, he's one shot, he's one shot, or he's cracked, he's cracked. Start getting more specific with the damage numbers. Make sure they're turned on. Beam turn for 150. That way your teammates know exactly, almost exactly, should I say, how much damage is left to deal. Wraith is an absolute shambles. She needs to heal up really quickly. Right now, I know you're not Wraith, but your teammate here is literally one bullet off dying. And I don't think she's disconnected from the game. Yeah, she's playing. She's worried about looting buildings, making sure no one touches the loot. Make sure that you heal up fully because third parties are real. People will third party you like no tomorrow. If you thought King's Canyon was bad, Olympus is just as bad, if not worse, because of the tridents. However, we don't see as many Revenant pushes, which is good. But both of the maps has its flaws and also has its upsides. So let's talk about kill points while he's rotating here. Right now, he has two. Basically, it's short for KP. When somebody asks how much KP do you have, they mean how many kill points do you have and kill points is summarized by how many kills and assists added together and you get capped at six in rank they used to be five but they increased it to six and it's always good to get early kp because then you don't have to worry about it as often when you get to late game you don't want to be you know kill hungry late game make that one mistake and it's going to cost the entire game i always say this i'd rather win with less kp then lose with max KP. So they landed power grid. There was definitely going to be a team rift somewhere. They didn't craft, I don't believe, but usually craft. You always want to have around four batteries and two mech gets on you when you are crafting. And if you have the crafter in your area, definitely take advantage of it. Now, let's say the crafter wasn't at power grid. I would literally rotate the rift just to craft and then go and make the rotation for the next zone. Crafting is key in these ranked games since it was put in from the start. But the zone is looking like it's pulling towards the middle left side of the map. We are running Bloodhound here so we can hit these beacons. Did we have a beacon in Power Grid? Yes, we did. It was not hit. If I'm playing a recon character on my team, I love landing at a building that has a beacon. So if I wasn't contested, I can loot that entire building, then hit the beacon straight away. That way I don't forget to go back to it, waste even more time. So when you're playing a recon character, and let's say you're the only recon character on your team make sure that you say all right i'm gonna hit this building because it has the beacon on there and that way i can just loot it hit the beacon and we're off the scene now the best spot to hold in my opinion is going to be around this general area the back side of oasis and then you can make your next move when the ring closes you also have the beacon there when that next ring closes you can hit that beacon figure out where you need to go to next take it a step at a time you don't need to be pushing yourself in the center of the map pushing turbine nothing like that they're playing it very good and let's see what happens beautiful entry scan you always want to be scanning a development right when you before you come up on the development get a scan down there could be teams ratting you never know weapon setup is going to be alternator 301 for now let's see what he decides to go for towards mid to end game it looks like they have a, a fight right in front of them let's see how they approach it beautiful scan and that team just lost height. So they dropped down right after that scan. They got scared. They might even take the trident out. Beautiful cleanup. That path is split up, which is nice. And he's getting peppered right from the boxing ring right now. Looks like a longbow. Now, are they going to rotate back and clean up the, the other squad that was started the fight in the first place? Looks like they are. Just pinging some tracks. Here. 
out for the count. Reloading. Target spotted. Hostile over there. Good cleanup. I think there's still more local. Yeah, but I think there's a wraith alive, I believe. Is that a lifeline there? Okay. Okay. It's a mirage. That's why I'm hearing all these footstep sounds. I'm like, this one to my right, this one over here. Mirage is low-key overpowered now. Don't sleep on him. The wraith. Where does she make that port? Let's see if that's a good port, too. Nice. At least one end of that portal is nowhere to be seen from the area of action. That way, you know, if they take it, they're going to take a risk of trying to take it. Make sure you place at least one end. If possible, place both ends of a portal near cover. And I believe the Mirage is the last one there. Oh, he's trying to make a getaway. A little getaway escape. Uh-oh. Don't tell me he just left the scene without being harmed. No chance. He's out. Okay. Someone just flew in. Let's see if he saw that. Dive trail on the top right. And that could be a whole nother team. So the whole team is oblivious to that dive trail. I guess they didn't see it. But luckily, they're not making the aggressive push on them. Because they would be beamed looting these death boxes if someone actually flew in there. Now, real quick, let's go back. Number one, while he's looting, he's running the one times classic on the 301. I was a super, super big fan of that. I would always run that over a two times, three times, two to four, any site. I was just like a diehard one times classic fan when it came to the 301. Because I can still beam at range, I plan 1440p on my monitor. So it's not really of a struggle to really see people. But when I started using the two times on the 301, I've noticed myself getting much more one clip opportunities where I'm hitting 150 to 200 plus with one magazine on the 301. So if you haven't been used to the two times on the 301, get used to it as soon as possible, especially when it comes to Olympus on this big map and you're running this alternator 301 setup, that means your 301 is gonna be your long range weapon. And if you have the anvils on it, even better. Maybe even throw a three times on it. So personally, I would put the two times on the 301, that's gonna go justice for you. And then as far as your secondary goes, we'll see. I also wanna back it up really quickly on the exchange where you went down. So right here, this is when you first hit the death box, you reload your alternator, and then you see one right there. You throw a scan, you definitely know he's there now. You have height here, you have somewhat of decent cover. Okay, there's a little lip right here. So even if you crouch, yes, you're not going to be totally head glitching this person where they can only see your head and you can get the shots off, but you still have some sort of cover, which makes them have to hit tougher shots. But what you do here wrong is you drop down before you even start shooting. Maybe drop down after you get the initial mag out. To see how much damage you actually did if you made him really weak go for it full send it definitely ape that guy but you drop down while trying to shoot at the same time which is even worse because now you're hitting mid-air shots which are very inaccurate especially when it comes to the 301 and then you drop you see you hit, you hit literally absolute zero bullets when you were dropping down now look how many bolts you have left in the mag 11. so a little bit less than halfway in your mag you hit some good shots here so you hit the final shots on this almost crack them Weapon swap, you still have to reload it. You're caught in the open, you have no cover. Always think, before you enter that gunfight, know what you can use as cover. Yes, I know it's one person, but if you can resist, no one going down in a squad fight makes the squad fights smooth and you're off to the next one. You're at 5kp, 8 squads left, 8 with 16. 8 times 3 is 24, you're missing 8 players, so there's a lot of solos and duo teams that are alive, which is a bonus for you and your squad since you have full team available here. You got a three man and you're just about max KP. So you're sitting really pretty right now. This would be a very good opportunity to rotate for that end zone. Make sure you can scan if you can scan a beacon because I haven't seen one beacon scan this game. Although you are running through these squads, a couple mistakes here and there. You can never go wrong with scanning a beacon. That way, you know, look at this guy I'm trying to rat up a storm Bean them. There we go, my man. So now you have max KP. A beautiful job so far. Max KP, six squads left. Six with 11. Jeez, this lobby is wiped. And they see some more people here. Very coordinated as a team, so I'm assuming you guys are partied up. 
If not, very good job playing solo. Here comes the shots. Not the best, but again, you are running that classic, so it's definitely tough. It looks like they're getting thirded. Good hound opportunity, though. Great pop on that. They have height. That's a very bad angle to take right there. Not the best angle to take. Here comes the black hole. Expect the nades. Are their nades flying in? Nope. Beautiful shots there. Almost cracked. Okay, so that squad's cleaned up. Still have the squad on height though. And they have an open shot on you. You got to be careful when you're looting right here. Definitely be careful. Although I do believe it's a dual team on the top there. You threw down a scan. You only scanned two. Race in that gunfight solo. An octane jump pad would be beautiful here. You get you and your team there. Up on height nice and quickly. Wraith needs some cover shots here. She's trying to take a bat, but and you're trying to rotate. Make sure your team is your teammate's good. Right? Wraith took a decent bit of damage that they could probably send her. And you're leaving her alone right now. A low risky play there. I don't even know what that team is doing, to be completely honest with you. They should have sent some more shots. They have height. Oh, I guess they're getting thirded. Feels bad. It's good that you're rotating for zone, though. He pulls up the map. I want to take a look at that final zone. So, you guys were in this general vicinity, this general vicinity, bantering around in this area. Uh, you decide to rotate highway, which was a lucky rotation because this team on height got thirded. If this team on height didn't get thirded, it would have kept beaming and beaming and beaming you. And that's probably why that race survived, because you and the Octane ran out to check your flank this way, while the Wraith was soloed out down low here with two enemies on top of her. If those two people on top here didn't get thirded, this Wraith was a thousand percent dead. Good rotation here, taking height, but this will be a tough rotation after that, though. This is all open space. You only have, like, one rock here, a little crevice in there with a, a few bins, maybe a statue there, so it's going to be tough to rotate. I'm expecting a jump pad rotation in this area. But it looks like it's just going to pull dead center zone. The best spot to hold would probably be top side of Oasis around here. I wouldn't rotate on this house because then you're putting yourself right in the middle of all the squads around you. So if you decide to get pushed, you can easily, easily get third partied right away. So you don't want to rotate like super center zone unless you have a caustic, unless you have a Watson, a defensive character to set up shop and hold it down with success. Even Rampart now. I've been seeing a lot more Ramparts and Ramparts come huge. When you put the shield in front of doorways, you absolutely beam players. Oh, you got a squad right here. Okay. Solo. The, the lobby was sort of died out regardless. Again, we, we saw like four with under 10 or something like that. So again, expect a lot of solos, a lot of duo teams. If you can manage to get your full team to end zone, that's a success on its own. When it comes to any type of lobby that you're playing, if you can get your whole team to an end zone, your chances of winning are increased drastically. Just because it's a numbers game. You have more numbers. So there was a team that already rotated early to that house. Yep, definitely hug left, rotate left. There it is. A pad wouldn't be bad here. Definitely throw a pad just to get up there quicker. Because right now you guys are all in the open. You can easily get peppered and farmed. Last two teams are fighting. Three squads left. So you don't need to rotate top left. Definitely start hugging in. Look for those knocks in the kill feed. I don't see any knocks yet. But pay attention to that. This is good though. This is very good. Stay nice and close. Stay hidden. Was there a knock? There wasn't a knock yet. Kind of risky. Oh, he's going He's going all the way in. That was an early hound. I would only pop hound if I saw a knock there. And then go. You see, because they're set up with classic there. This is sort of a waste of hound, but it, it is what it is. He 
don't need to rush it. Send some shots. Pepper them off. Let them waste the heals. Because I know you have a lot of heals. You and your team should have a decent amount of heals. And when that's the case, sit back at a distance. Play your cover. Farm that damage. Make them waste as much heals as possible. Oh, oh. Get to be on that cover. There it is. Honestly, I, I don't think it's two full teams. I think it's a solo and a duo. Duo in the house, solo on the bottom. I like this use of cover here, though. Very good use of cover. That That's a nice head glitch there. Uh, you got cover here if they're trying to peek from the house balcony. Very good spot right here. That is not a good option there, because... <laughs> It's basically a 50-50 gamble. None of you guys had cover there. But it is what it is. You get some good shots there. Taking a bat behind cover. I love it. Ray soloed out right now, though. Looking for an initial knock. But again, you don't really need to force that knock. You still have two other squads. By the looks of the zone, I don't think it's going to end on this development. So if you camp outside of the development, you'll be absolutely fine. And that's a solo right there, 100%. Because that person was just shooting at the people inside the house. Good scan. Oh, maybe not a solo. I saw two there. It could be a mirage. Again, rate this split. Not good. Getting health back. Personally, the way I would play this is the head glitch you had before on that staircase. Sit back there. Chill out back there. Look where the zone is. The zone is pulling more towards where you were previously than on these compound houses here. Because you're going to have to rotate regardless. Maybe if you want to get the kills, but again, you're at max KP, it doesn't matter. And if you're worried about them fighting, finishing the fight, and then you want to get there as soon as possible, have Octane throw a jump pad right in the open. You can easily take Kite or back in this house, wherever you want to get to, instantly. So a pad out in the open, just vibe out back here. Because then, if they have to rotate from here, you're going to get beautiful shots when they have to rotate wide in the open. That's how I would play it, but again... You can play it how you like. You can still get the win. Look at this guy. Trying to flank. I think this is the solo. It's got to be. No way he's going to be running the open like that by himself. Bang. He took a hard left, I think, the bang. And that's the other team. Oh, there's that bang in there. Taking a bat right in the open. Not good. Definitely run to cover first. Run to cover first and take that bat. There you go. That Bangalore is super sneaky, eh? She got away so many times. From you, your team, and the other team. But I like how you guys backed it up. This is how you want to play it. Back here. Let's vibe out back here. Maybe throw a jump pad on the ground here. And let's see where it pulls. Exactly what I said. Right on you guys. So people in the houses, they're going to have to rotate with zero cover. Easy shots then. Also, don't give too much leeway. I know you guys are backing up here because you want to play this cover. This was still in zone. This little tree box shoulder peak area here. That's still in zone. You know, if you back up past that, you're going to give that cover to the enemy team. And that's what I like to call leeway. Don't give them too much leeway. Know what you can play as cover. And if you have that cover, do not give it to them for free. You're giving them free real estate at that point. I like it. You push back up. This is what I like. Throwing out the anvils. Love to see it. Let the shots fly, baby. I don't think they're partied up. 
Because he's like constantly pinging for this right here. They're definitely not partied up. So scratch whatever I said before with, you know, being together holding cans. I guess I was just lucky at that point. But this Wraith is really... I don't know if she's flustered because she doesn't have max KP. Oh man, just got crabbered. Sheesh. All right, let's see how they uh, let's see how they reset here. They need a massive reset, and they have to do it quickly. Ten seconds before the zone starts closing in, and now they have to give up that free real estate because you have to take the time to heal, back up, and then get back into the fight. Right here, before you take this Phoenix, I know you're one shot. Do not get me wrong. Taking the Phoenix early is nice and all, but you have a scan. Throw that initial scan before you heal. So that way your team knows if they're pushing you. And then you can be prepared to start peeking which angles they're going to be coming from. Always making sure you get your scans ahead of time before a heal. Especially a big heal where it takes 10 seconds. Because then you'll have another scan ready. I like this spot though. Really nice spot. And good reset on that too. Here we go. They're flustered out in the open there. Shots are going down. Nice little trap on the back. That solo's dead. Another one knocked from the other team. Looking for one here. Beautiful. self res. GG's. I think you're a kill leader too. Absolutely popped off the main stage. That's why that Wraith was playing like that. She only had 4 KP. I knew there was something wrong with that. Like, Because you you were pinging for that Wraith to keep coming over, coming over. She was looking for that knock by herself, which ended up... Honestly, she would have got max KP if she played with you. Because then you can team fire together. She was like super anxious about getting those kills. And when you do that in those higher tier lobbies, not good at all. That's how you get singled out, focus fire, done. Uh, Octane did a very good job. I think Octane was pretty good. Maybe a little bit more jump pad action. Uh, when, when you guys were rotating, I didn't see him putting it down as often. Which is okay on his part, but he held his own. He had 5 KP, Wraith had 4. But that is going to conclude today's coaching series. If you guys learned a thing or two, definitely be sure to drop a like. It's always appreciated. And if you guys are wondering how to submit your gameplay to the coaching series, check my community feed. I made a post with all the requirements and where to send the gameplay. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, this has been your boy Sol and D. And I'm signing off. Peace.